Greetings friend, in this tutorial I will teach you everything you need to know about Sudoku Swordfish. Not only will I give you all the definitions and how to spot these, but I'll show you how to solve them and I'll give you three different examples on different types of swordfish you may find in the Sudoku puzzle. Stay tuned to the end because the third example is the best and I got a special treat for you. And with that, it's solving time. So for our first example, this is a classic Sudoku that Simon Anthony solved against Derek Neal. And I have all the links to all the puzzles and videos in the description below. Um, I want you to look at these purple cells, the purple highlighted cells. What they represent is where a three can go in columns two, column five, and column eight. And what you'll notice is that the threes are limited to the same three rows. So even though then columns two, five, and eight, three can only be here in rows one, seven, and eight. And you may notice that a three can't be here because of this three, um, but that's okay because since it's limited to the same three rows, rows one, seven, and eight, this is still a Sudoku swordfish. So what is a swordfish? The Sudoku swordfish strategy is a single candidate technique. It uses three rows and three columns. So you only have to focus on one digit, in this case, the threes. The grid must contain three rows, three columns, or digits of candidate to only two or three cells. So this is a little different than an X-wing because you can have two or three cells. When you do an X-wing solving, uh, you have to have just two, you have to have uh, a, a exact two by two, right? X wing, you know, a, a three could be here, here, or there, or there, if that's where we saw the X wing. But in a swordfish, it can be two or three because the logical work the same. And I'll show you that. It does not, you didn't have to have a three right here. Just because you have two or three cells, you can make this work. And so, a swordfish in an X wing is actually in the fish uh, category of solving strategies. So, let's show how this works. Basically, the base sets are where you're limited to the two or three candidates. So that's going to be the columns, two, five, and eight. And then the cover sets are the rows where we can make additional elimination. So rows one, seven, eight are your cover sets. And so what works here is that three in row one has to be here or here. And then row seven has to be here, here, or here. And row eight, here, here, and here. So basically, the threes in these columns have to be in these rows. And if they're not in those rows, you try to put a three outside of that row, you're going to break the puzzle. I'll show you how that works. So let's say you want to put a three right here. If you put a three right here, then you would eliminate the threes from these rows. Right? And so then where could a three be in column two? It could be right there. So you could put a three right there. And I'll get out of the coloring mode there you go you put a three right there and that would eliminate these threes right and then now you look up and you now have two places to put a three up here in row one but you still got to cover two columns and so the other place you put a three up here the other column will be missing a three you'll have no place to put a three so you break the puzzle that's why the threes have to be in one of the purple sections. And so how the swordfish works is you can eliminate the, all the extra threes that would be along row one. So this three right here, this three right here, you can eliminate. This three right here, you can eliminate. Uh, and here and here, you already have three, so you want to eliminate those. And then you can eliminate a three from right there. So that's how the swordfish strategy works. Before we get to our next example, I want to let you know that I'm going to put a link at the end of this video to arguably the most popular Sudoku that uses swordfish. So you want to stay tuned for that. Now, let's move on to our next example. For our next example, I picked a puzzle called Xiphius 2 by Bondi. I don't think I've actually featured this in a video before, but I've featured some of his other puzzles. And Xiphius actually means swordfish. It's Latin for swordfish or type of swordfish. And so one of those keys of, hey, when would I want to look for a swordfish? If it's in the name of the puzzle, that's probably a good uh, clue that you might want to look for swordfish and solving. And normally the time you're looking for a swordfish is after you've gone through and kind of look for all of the snare notation and the naked and hidden singles that you can normally do. And then you're switching to those single candidate strategies. That's where swordfish, X-wings, skyscrapers, 
two-string kites come into play, that's when you want to start looking for them. In this particular puzzle, you really won't get very far, and you need to go right to those single candidate tricks. So let's look at the ones. Where can the ones be in this puzzle? And I'll put them all out right here for you, okay? And I'll color all these cells to make them a little easier to find. Another thing to help you figure out if a puzzle may contain swordfish is you'll want to look for some kind of pattern like this where you have like three of a particular digit and they're spread out in the starting grid where you have one you have one one here across this top band and in this leftmost um we call it a tower right so the band and the tower and then you have another one in the middle band the middle band and the middle tower and then you have the third one is in the bottom band and the rightmost tower. So when they're spread out like that, they usually will create a pretty good uh, situation where you can start looking for swordfish and then kind of keep you a swordfish. Also, puzzles that are pretty good for set normally have swordfish in them. Um, and, and a lot of this, you'll see you, you have, you know, this particular puzzle actually contains multiple swordfish. The ones we're going to focus on are the ones here. But you can see the threes probably contain a swordfish. You can see the sevens probably be a swordfish there. So you have multiple cans to choose from. So now let's look at these ones. You may notice you want to look for, is there any rows or columns where the ones are restricted to uh, the same three, you know, uh, houses, right? And so let's look at column one, column five, and column nine. And we'll color those a little bit different. We'll color them yellow. What you notice is that in columns one, five, and nine, the ones are limited to the same three rows. Limited to row two, limited to row six, and limited to row seven. So we know that this is a Sudoku swordfish because these ones in the same three columns are limited to at most same three rows. Even though there's only two in each column, it still works as a swordfish. So what we could do, since the base sets are the columns, we could eliminate all the purple ones that are in rows 2, row 6, and row 7. So you can eliminate all those ones. And so if I eliminate all those ones, they'd be gone. Now, something else I wanted to point out, many times a swordfish will be symmetrical. And what I mean by that is instead of using columns and eliminating the rows, you might also find the same... Uh, similar swordfish in the rows that will eliminate the same digits in the columns. And this is the case in this one. So if I put those ones back and change the coloring here, actually, let's, let's keep the ones removed. because I want to show you something here. All right, so let's change these back to purple. Now, if you look across the rows, you might have spotted another swordfish of ones. If you look across row one, Row 5 and row 9, you'll notice that they're limited to the same three columns. They're limited to column 3, column 6, and column 8. There's also a swordfish. So you can make the swordfish with the base set to rows or columns. This one, I call it symmetrical in that uh, you, can all, you can look at it either using the rows or the columns. What eliminations could you make? You can make eliminations down column 3. And you notice those ones that are already missing, they're still missing. And the ones in column six are still missing, and then in column eight. So the, you can see the swordfish two different ways. It makes the same exact eliminations. I wanted to point that out to you because you will come across this quite a bit. So subscribe to Smart Hobbies if you want to learn how to solve swordfish even better. Now let's move on to our next example. For our third example, I have this classic Zoku by Sam Kappelman Lines. I got the link below. Awesome video, awesome puzzle. You will definitely want to check this one out. Where can the Canon nines go in this puzzle? And in particular, you want to look across rows two, four, six, and eight. Okay, I'll give you a few seconds to kind of look at that. All right. You may notice that the nines could go in four places in rows two, four, six, and eight. And you might also notice it's the same four columns. Columns one, three, seven, and nine. Okay, I talked about swordfish. I talked about three by three. What is this? This is called a jellyfish. So when you take that swordfish strategy and you go to a four by four, 
it's a Sudoku jellyfish, and that's what this is. And what a jellyfish I mean, it's the same thing as a swordfish. What it means is that in rows two, four, six, and eight, the nines are limited to the same four columns, columns one, three, seven, and nine. So you can eliminate all the other nines from those columns. So you can eliminate the nines from all of these cells. You can see there's an there's already nine in the middle, so you don't need to worry about that one. There's already nine right here in row seven. So you can eliminate the nines from all of those. I'll call a, yeah, let's go for uh, red. You can eliminate the nines from all the red cells. I wanted to show you this to kind of see how this fish family works. How an X wing is a two by two, a swordfish is a three by three, and now this jellyfish is a four by four. But the logic is still the same. So you can make all those eliminations and you can move on solving in this particular puzzle. If you think you know everything there is to know about swordfish, well, check out this solve of arguably the most popular classic Sudoku that uses swordfish patterns. You're going to love it. Don't forget to buy me a coffee link. I want to thank all the setters for letting me feature your puzzle on this channel. Thank you so much for watching.